more and more amazing .NET MAUI plugins are being created. And in this video, we're going to look at camera.maui, which is a camera view that you can use inside of your .NET MAUI application. There are already plenty of options to use the camera in your .NET MAUI application. The most obvious one is the media picker that's built into .NET MAUI directly. You can use that to take an image, uh, pick something from the gallery, do all these kinds of amazing things. We have ZXing, Zebra Crossing, uh, or the Google Vision ML Kit based barcode scanning. They both do something with barcode scanning. I have videos on all of these. I will put them down below in the um, description or in the comments, so go check that out. Uh, but now we have this new one, which is the camera.maui which is basically a camera view. Uh, we've been trying to create that for the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit as well. We're still working on that. But now, in the meantime, we have this other great option. Um, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. This also does the barcode scanning based on Zebra Crossing, ZXing. It also does barcode generation. I'm not going to focus on that. If you want to know more about that in the context of this plugin, please let me know down in the comments. But I'm going to focus on the camera view and what you can do with that one, how you can incorporate that in your project. Um, so let's just hop over to Visual Studio and let's go check it out. Before we dive straight into Visual Studio 2022, here is the repository for this plugin, HGEM, which is apparently the alias for Hector Alonso. Thank you so much for putting this together, Hector. Um, so if you find yourself here and you want to support Hector for his great work, see if you can sponsor him on GitHub or at the very least, star this repository here in the top right so that um, you know he knows that you're watching, that you appreciate his work. Now here in the readme, you will find all the features, you will find how to set it up, but don't worry about that. I'm going to show you that in this video. But you can see all these features across all these platforms, basically only type and is missing, which is really great. Uh, well, it's not great that it's missing, but it's really great that all the other platforms are supported. Android, iOS, macOS, Windows. Um, you can see the preview. You can mirror the preview if that's what you want. You can do the flash. You can take a snapshot, save the snapshot. And with this one, you can also do the barcode detection and decode. Like I already said, I'm not going to focus on that, but you can definitely do it with this plugin as well. So this goes all about what you need to do to set it up. Um, don't worry about that. If you want more detail, definitely go there, but I'm going to show you right now. So let's click this away after you've started. And um, here we can see a file new .NET MAUI application in Visual Studio 2022 on the left. I've mirrored my physical device, which I got right here on the right. Um, you can do that with the phone link app that's built into Windows so that we can actually see some actual camera action. So that being said, let's go to our solution explorer and then in our project, right click and do manage NuGet packages. Now I already installed it. So here is the camera.maui um, version 1.2.1 at the time of recording. Make sure that you install that one um, and it brings in a couple of dependencies and all whatnot. But um, you have that. And after you've installed it, there is a couple of things that you need to do to uh, initialize it. So install it, go to your solution explorer again, and then into your MAUI program. And here we have to add a little line to our app builder. That's how it goes with the plugins these days. We have this use Maui camera view, um, which you need the using camera.maui for first, but it will add that automatically. So use Maui camera view, and that's all you need to do. But also for the camera, we need the permissions. So we need to go back to our solution explorer, go into that platforms folder, and then for each of these platforms, we need to set the permissions. Go back to the readme of the repository for all the details. Basically, you just need to go to the Android one, um, double click on the Android manifest. Um, I think you can get all the required permissions. We have this little graphical editor now. Um, so you will need to find the camera here. You can also open it with the XML editor and enter it manually. Um, for iOS, Mac Catalyst, List, you need to go into the plist. And again, you can find the permissions right here as well. I don't think it's in a graphical editor yet, but you can figure that out. So make sure that the permissions are there. Go to the repository to the sample code on the GitHub repository that's linked to this video. All the links can be found below in the video description or the comment down below. So with that all in place, let's go do some actual fun things. So I'm going to remove everything inside of this vertical stack layout, and I'm going to add my camera view right here. So First, we need to add this XML namespace. I'm going to name it CV for camera view is camera.maui. So just find this one with the IntelliSense and it will uh, fill in all the right details for you. So we got that in place. And now what you can do is CV and you can see that barcode image, right? To do the actual barcodes or the camera view, which is the one that I want. And we can do X name so I can reference it from the code behind as well. I'm going to give this a little with request. 
of 300, a height request of 300. And um, actually, so what you might want to do, um, I've seen that in a couple of samples. I'm not sure if, if this is something that's necessary, but for the vertical stack layout, you might want to do these vertical options um, fill and also for the horizontal one so that it um, actually, you know, fills the, the space nicely so that we can actually see this camera view showing up. Again, I'm not really sure if that's uh, necessary, but that's something that I saw in the sample. So let's just mimic it for now to be on the safe side. And we got all that in place. And the funny thing here is if we uh, go look at the camera view APIs, um, something that's obvious is some APIs that have camera in it. So we see the camera, which is the selected camera, because these devices can have multiple cameras, right? We have one on the back and the front and maybe some more. Um, so this is the actual selected camera right now. So you can switch between them. If you go to the sample app in this um, um, repository that I just uh, showed you, there is a sample app and there is an actual picker that will allow you to switch between the different cameras. And you can do so with the cameras collection that's also on the camera view. So when the camera view is loaded, it will go through all the cameras on your device and put them in this list camera view that cameras and you can go through them if that's what you want. We also have this event cameras loaded. So whenever the cameras are loaded, whenever that cameras um, 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 collection is populated, you can um, go there and, and you can actually select the camera that you want. So let's set that up because this is how you initialize this camera view. And I'm going to create a new event handler with the camera view cameras loaded. Go to my code behind. I'm going to remove this on counter click code because we don't have that anymore. And here in my camera view cameras loaded, I can say camera view dot camera, which is the selected one. And I can now do is uh, camera view dot cameras dot, um, well, cameras dot first. So I'm going to use a little link query here to get the first camera. You can also use it as with the uh, index. So you can just say um, zero here to actually select the first one. And you probably want to check if there actually is one, um, but this will select the camera. So we've got that in place. And what we need to do now is actually start the camera, right? So you need to do that on the main thread. So I can do main thread dot begin in Vogue on main thread. And there we have it. So do this. And what I want to do here is then say, actually, you need to await it. That's very important. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. Camera view dot um, camera. Well, actually, I think you can do start camera immediately from here. So we can just say start camera async. So we can just do that. Now there's one weird thing um, which seems to be specific to Samsung devices. There is an issue on the repository. This way, just starting the camera doesn't work. It works for most Android devices, but not for my Samsung device that I got right here. What you can do to work around it is say stop camera first. I don't know, uh, and then start the camera and then it suddenly starts working. So I've got all this. And actually the cool thing here is if you do that start camera async, if you want to have a little bit more control, you can do var result is because this will actually um, return some kind of um, result thing. So I can check if result is, and then you can have this camera result. So success, access denied, no camera selected. So you have a couple of different scenarios that might uh, be going on here. So you want to check that if you're actually starting this. For now, I'm just going to um, follow the happy path and not worry about this. And if we actually deploy this application, then we should see our application coming up. It's going to ask me for the permission that's built into the um, plugin right here. It's going to take care of that for you. And uh, then we should see our actual camera preview. So the application here is loading up while I'm talking about it. It's going to ask me for the permission uh, only this time. And here we go. Here we have our camera. So you can see again a little behind the scenes that is happening in my videos from time to time. Um, and you can see that camera preview right here. So you can see my keyboard and my mouse. So we got this camera view working. That's pretty cool. But what can we do with this? Um, now, let's add a little button. I'm just going to show you this uh, snapshot thing right here because now we have this camera view, this camera preview, and let's take a little photo with that, right? A little picture. So we're going to add a button and let's call that uh, text uh, smile. And we can do the click command. So create a new event handler right here. And now we should have this button. And actually also let's add an image with a name so that I can reference it. 
uh, my image and there we have it maybe give that a little width and height as well 200 not too big 200 just to get the idea so we got that so we will have the camera view a button and an image um, and let's see if we can load a image uh, inside of that image right <laughs> um, so here for the button what we can do is say camera view and let's inspect the, the APIs actually here. So you're going to see a lot of exclamation marks. I think something is wrong with my Windows setup. It does work on Windows, but it will say that the APIs are not available on Windows. I don't really know why. Um, you have this feature of the auto snapshot. So you can take snapshots automatically with some kind of interval. You can see here the seconds. So you can set a number of seconds um, in which intervals, in which snapshots will be taken, and it will be automatically updated, which is really cool. So you can just do that. Um, barcode detected with all kinds of options for like hey how fast what is the frame rate should it be enabled what are the options etc etc so we got all that the cameras loaded we've seen that um and there is much much more but the ones that we're actually after is in the snapshot so you can see some snapshot um, the stream um, um, a, a image source you can get that here from the auto snapshot or you can just say hey take uh, get snapshot and save snapshot, right? So the get one just provides you with an image source that you can use inside of the actual image. And the save snapshot will give you that same snapshot, but now it will save it to um, the path that you can specify with this thing. So you can also automatically save that to disk from right here. That's pretty cool. Get snapshot, let's just do that. And it's going to give us an image source. So I can just hook that up to my image dot source is get snapshot which is really cool and i can specify in which image format which can be jpeg or png png is the default but let's specify it anyway um, so whenever i click the button now it should load that in my image control so let's see if that actually works um, and then we got our basics for this camera view working um, there definitely is some things here um, and some room for improvements as well which i'll get to in a little bit um, but you know um, this is already a pretty solid camera view that you can use right here so let's just get back in here let's do it while using the app okay so we got that let's do 24.7k subscribers which is really cool smile Boom, and there we see, we have the snapshot in our actual image control. You can just do it like that. And with like the interval, you can maybe create some kind of cool webcam for your home, or I don't know what you can come up with, crazy ideas, let me know down in the comments. But this is a very cool um, camera view that you can use inside of your .NET MAUI application. All right, basically a short and sweet plugin that you can use inside of your .NET MAUI application right now. And one of the things that a lot of people I think would love to see is get access to kind of like that raw camera feed so that you can hook up um, like actual analysis there. So if you have that camera feed and you can actually access the raw frames in there so that you can hook it up to all kinds of AI things and detect faces in there or detect objects in there, which is something that people really want. So if we can make that happen, uh, Hector, that would be really cool. Uh, or on the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit, we're working on that there as well. Um, but other than that, this already works pretty well. And kind of like the advantage is we have the media picker in .NET MAUI, but that will, um, you know, give you a full screen UI, which is somewhat customizable, but not really. And with this camera view, you can take the images, but it's fully customizable. You can just make it this little block inside of your application. You can make it something full screen. You can style it any way you want. So that's really amazing. And I think it's safe to say that this plugin also is definitely worth a amazing plugin alert. So here you have it, the amazing plugin alert. Thank you so much, Hector, for putting this together. Thank you so much for watching again one of my videos. Please click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and maybe check out this playlist with more .NET MAUI videos. Or if you want to see more plugins that will uh, make your life easier as a .NET MAUI developer, check this playlist out. See you on the other side.